The hue saturation is another good one where if you needed to make a couple of, if you needed to fine tune the, uh, the, the color, I'll go back to my dropper and uh, it's slightly red. It picked up, uh, depending on how you adjust things like curves, you could, you, could, you could alter the color a little bit. So I'm seeing a little bit on the numbers. I mean, I'm looking at, there's, there's two sets of numbers now. And the, uh, the left side is what it was. The right side is, is after the change, like after, after the curves. So I'll look at the right side of the numbers, and they're actually not too much different. And I notice that the, there's a slight bit more red than the, than the green or blue. So this is 40, 36, 36. Probably not too much to worry about. If you wanted to worry about it, though, um, master just means everything. It'll, it'll change the hue, saturation, and lightness of, of all the colors. You can, you can reduce saturation and get pretty close to a black and white uh, picture. You can also uh, do this pull-down menu, and it'll show you uh, all the colors and their opposites, red, green, blue, uh, yellow, cyan, and magenta. And so I thought it looked a little bit red, so I could take out uh, a little bit of red. I go back to uh, uh, putting the eyedropper on there, and it's changed a little bit. I might have to do a little bit more. You could see, you can actually see the, essentially the, it losing the red and becoming a little bit more uh, cyan. So that that's a little bit closer, a little bit more, essentially a little bit more neutral uh, up in the sky. It also makes it uh, slightly darker. So you could go back to your curves, and you could you could lighten this slightly. To get a little bit more uh, definition in in the rocks, and there's all there's you can continue with all all of this selection and and different uh, working on different parts uh, for a long time. You could go into minute detail. Uh, you can use things like the magic wand tool. I could just select this shadow if I wanted to, and you just do that freehand. Uh, there's, a, there's another select and mask. Uh, for, for each of these selection tools, there will always be a little button that says select and mask. Uh, for something like this, uh, since I'm selecting the shadow area, I might want a lot of feather. Uh, maybe, maybe as much as, uh, what am I doing here? Say 15, 20 uh, on there which means it'll, it'll be very, very fuzzy around it because I, I don't want like a hole that I've, that I've created to uh, lighten or darken. So I can go to curves on this. And it's, it's fairly dark. Uh, another thing you could do is you can hold down the control uh, or the command key. And it'll, it'll select a point. That's pretty dark. I'll put it, uh, let's see, yeah, that's pretty dark. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do another example of that. Uh, you're, you're looking at the info panel, right? Check out whether it's pretty dark or not. Yeah, I'm just looking at the picture, saying, oh, that's pretty dark. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, and then so the, um, well, to, to uh, add to the answer to the question about the histogram, so, uh, this is the only, uh, I've selected this part right here within the, uh, the marching ants here, the little dotted line. So I open up curves. This is the histogram for just this selection. And you look at that and you think, oh, shit, <laughs> that's, a, that's not such a great histogram. But it doesn't matter because this is a, a, a boulder that's com almost completely dark. You see a little bit of, of uh, detail, but not a whole lot. That's a great example of how curves work. And, it, and, and in, in this case, it doesn't matter what this looks like because you, you don't need a good histogram for that because it's going to be pretty dark anyway. All you want is to maybe add a slight bit more detail in that. And so you're adding a, a tiny bit of detail. Whenever you, if, if you ever try to lighten things, you're reducing the contrast by quite a bit. So uh, it, if you ever lighten something or, or reduce the contrast, it's a two-step deal. 
you don't want to leave it like that because because that part will look very very flat. Um, if I if you look at that, uh, you'll you'll say, oh well, that looks kind of weird because it's it's a different contrast than the rocks or the sky. Uh, so you go, you go back to your uh, selection, you open up curves again, and you add some contrast just by dragging the bottom left hand side over. And and so that way you've got you 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 added you add back that contrast that you lost if if you try to lighten that a little bit. Question: um, When you selected that area, was that the feather? Is that selection? I think it's a very it's a very precise line that was drawn. But was that feathered in any way? That that was feathered because I did the select and mask and I and I raised the feathering to 15, which is quite which is quite a bit. It, it, it'll show up if you if you blow it up really huge, but it doesn't really show up. Uh, the dotted lines will, will stay that way. The dotted lines won't, won't get fuzzy themselves. But if you... Um, so doesn't it mean the border of the dotted lines is whiter or fuzzier? Or yes, it's, it makes, makes it fuzzier. Yeah. It, it just doesn't show up visually uh, as you're doing it. It'll show up when you're... Uh, Yeah, yeah, it'll 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 show up if if you if you make a dramatic thing. Uh, you you don't want a lot of drama in your picture, though. You want you want a, a lot of subtlety as, as you're doing it. Um, so the hue saturation is good, uh, and then you're you're doing different selections using the using these various tools. You could do a, a, like I, sh I said, you could do a combination of these tools. You could do a quick selection tool. You could do a little fine tuning of of selecting or deselecting some of the rocks or something along the horizon with uh, either the lasso tool or, or the magic wand, which is another. Um, magic wand is sort of a funny, funny one. It, it, it does a similar thing. You have to keep uh, clicking on a point, though, and you have to, like the tolerance has to be set fairly high for you to actually select something. And you can hold down. Uh, it's actually set to add, so I'm just adding. Uh, different selections, and, I, and it'll it'll select uh, similar colors or or similar tones, so that uh, what it's doing is that it's thinking that the rocks in the sky are are pretty close to each other, which uh, tonal wise that they, they probably are, but you don't want the uh, you want either the rocks or the sky, so so you definitely don't want that. Uh, so so then you just go to your quick selection tool because that seems to be select just the sky or or, or just the rocks. 